What was your overall take uh, when you look at uh, the uh, midterms elections and in Talbot County? You no, know, in terms of how I've been feeling about it, um, uh, excited, uh, proud of my county. You know, in 2020, we uh, did some something pretty incredible in terms of uh, rejecting uh, then President Trump and, and and everything really he stands for and. And we did it again this year, and we did it in even stronger, stronger numbers. With out of twenty-five thousand votes cast in the presidential last uh, last time, you know, uh, President Biden was was victorious locally here by one hundred sixteen votes. Uh, this go round, uh, Dan Cox, delegate Dan Cox, uh, who was of course Trump endorsed, um, lost by over one thousand one hundred uh, votes here locally, and and I think that that sends a message. And then on top of that, you know, you can't just be against something. You have to be for something. And from the top of the ticket with, with Westmore and, and Aruna Miller, all the way down to, uh, you know, our county council candidates and even, uh, those nonpartisan board of education candidates. I mean, um, you know, the, the people who stepped up are our friends, neighbors, community leaders, people who put their names on the ballots, um, the candidates who stepped up this cycle in particular uh, gave Talbot County voters just that. Thank you for that overview. Uh, I do uh, agree that the county has become purple. I did see some interesting trends or uh, differences. I was taken, for example, with uh, Barry Glassman's uh, victory over uh, Brooke uh, Learman for Comptroller. You think that that's the uh, the Hogan factor? Yeah, the the Glassman race is uh, one of two that's really going to bug me at, in terms of the statewide races because um, we actually, uh, if I'm if I recall correctly, we're we're down eight votes uh, for uh, Attorney General elect Anthony Brown. I, I don't think we were able to to carry that seat either, uh, which is frustrating. <laughs> and certainly those those eight votes are going to. Uh, Keep me up at night um, <laughs> over the next couple of years, I'm sure. But that's a, the Glassman race and the uh, the Brown race in particular are two that I really want to get into the weeds in terms of uh, the precinct level data that we're going to get from the State Board of Elections. Um, but Hogan, Governor yeah. Hogan is is incredibly popular here out, out on, on the shore. And yeah. um, that's something that probably uh, kept up a lot of uh, Republican candidates out here. And uh, certainly, I think, you know, I'm not going to, uh, weighed into you know Republican politics, but I didn't see uh, I didn't see Glassman out there uh, you know riding the coattails of of Delegate Cox. You know that degree of separation certainly helped almost in uh, not being a part of the conversation. I wish I had done my homework, but my intuition makes me feel that Heather Meserv did a lot better than any other recent congressional uh, candidate going against Andy Harris. Uh, she did uh, win the county. Uh, of course, uh, Harris did win re-election. What's your take on uh, uh, the uh, Missouri candidacy? Our delegate Missouri uh, was a fantastic candidate uh, and, and is a fantastic person. Uh, she represents Shore Values, uh, and and God, she met so many people out on the campaign trail. I mean, she ran the exact perfect type of race that you can win in in a district that's drawn uh, like ours. You're correct in that she strongly outperformed any other candidate. Uh, I believe she's the only candidate uh, who has been able to keep Andy Harris uh, below 60 percent uh, uh, district wide. Uh, and then, of course, she won by, I think, north of 1,100 votes here locally in Talbot. And, and you know, <laughs> I told Heather... <laughs> I would walk into the Chesapeake Bay if she were if she told me to. I mean, she was a fantastic candidate, an inspirational leader, um, and I do believe the the people of this county um, or and this district, I, I should say, um, are are at a loss uh, because she will not be representing us in the halls of Congress. The one thing that uh, locally uh, with the state's attorney and and Joe Cole winning uh, against Ellen Barry uh, Grudman. Uh, any uh, thoughts on that race? I don't know. I'm at, I'm at a loss uh, uh, for words there. Uh, Ellen has been a longtime public servant, uh, a dedicated leader in this community, an advocate for uh, particularly for, for children uh, in our community. And um, when, you know, I, I, my understanding is 
Um, she, you know, tried to work with the uh, current incumbent who's uh, retiring, of course. And um, uh, for some reason or another, he, he went off and, and recruited another uh, individual um, who has some familiarity with the county. Of course, he now, of course, he lives here and, and works out of the Talbot County uh, State's Attorney's Office. But it's hard to beat someone with, with nearly two decades of experience uh, and institutional knowledge. And I'm not sure where uh, uh, Ellen is, is going from here. But uh, certainly, the, I, in my opinion, the, the county is, is, again, at a loss for for uh, not having uh, such an, an, a passionate advocate uh, for justice uh, and equality and equity, uh, or I should say equitable justice uh, in, our, in our county. And I wish um, Mr. Cole the best and I hope he does uh, the best because uh, the people of our county uh, need a strong leader. I, I maintain that um, I believe Ellen was the, was the strong leader that we needed and Ellen was, was nearly neck and neck with, with uh, Mr. Cole early voting and of course Republicans came in election day and, and she came up short, just short, um, though she dominated mail-in ballots. So, I mean, you know, she, she was a fantastic candidate, um, remains a, a strong and committed community leader. Um, I don't think she's going anywhere. <laughs> um, and, and uh, you know, I just wish, uh, I wish it was a different result, but I also know that uh, at the end of the day, we need a strong leader in the state's attorney's office. I wish uh, I wish Mr. Cole the best uh, over the next four years. I want to uh, switch to uh, the county council, particularly challenging for those of us uh, in the media who are trying to cover that race because of the way in which uh, the information is presented on the uh, Board of Elections website. So. Uh, and you went through this with us, where the early results, as you were saying, uh, actually showed a significant lead by the Republicans. Uh, and then slowly but surely, uh, the uh, mail-in ballots come in, and uh, we have a totally different uh, verdict, uh, what, 10, 12 days later. Uh, and maybe for a different program, we can talk about why that delay took place. Uh, but in any event, we do have results. You, you did gain a seat uh, on the county council, but what were your overall impressions? You know, you, you shouldn't be surprised when I say it. In my opinion, our candidates, um, I think we brought the, the best ideas, the most passion, um, and most importantly, the strongest sense of unity uh, to the table, our, our five uh, stellar candidates. Um, you know, we came up short for the majority. Uh, but, you know, after one day of, of I believe, the mail-in ballot count, uh, Pete Lesher, uh, of course, our fantastic incumbent uh, uh, county councilman, he became the, the top vote getter in the county. And then from then on, with the additional canvases of, uh, and by canvas, I mean count, uh, of the mail-in ballots, um, his lead only uh, increased. I think he won by north of 700 votes compared to the second place, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. county council winner. Um, so that was a huge statement. Uh, I think a profound statement in terms of uh, the direction and in terms of who the who the people of our county see as a leader. Um, and then in terms of Keisha, wow, what a nail biter uh, that was. Uh, we, we knew fairly early that it was going to come down to 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 Montgomery and, and Keisha. With, with Montgomery getting, I think, roughly 24% uh, of the mail-in ballots and, and Keisha getting 64%. And, and our, our trajectory was 12 votes off. But, um, but, uh, but, but to, uh, to, you know, we kept it conservative. So we were 12 votes low. And she, turns out she was uh, 12 votes higher than we thought she would be. So um, good problem to have. So one of the most uh, unique aspects of the council race was the interjection of, a, a, in essence, a political action committee, uh, the uh, Talbot Integrity Project, uh, whose exclusive issue was related to uh, the trap housing development Lakeside. Uh, this was uh, a, a well-run uh, kind of uh, campaign, if you will, uh, with lawn signs all over the place and uh, a good bit of interaction with the uh, candidates about their views on this. Um, 
Do you think it had influence, and is that a good thing? Uh, so let's start with the uh, the first question. Did it have influence? Um, yeah, I don't see how Lynn Milkey gets uh, the second highest number of votes, even beating out uh, incumbent council president Chuck Callahan uh, by maybe just under 100 or maybe just over 100. I'm not sure, but I don't see how. And, and of course, Lynn Milkey was endorsed by the Talbot Integrity Project. So I don't see how she performs that well without um, Tip having a, a strong uh, influence uh, over uh, you know, the voters and, and their, how they made their decisions. Um, is it a good thing? It, it's the right of every uh, you know, private uh, citizen in the country to, to organize and, and mobilize in terms of uh, single issue advocacy. They're not a political action committee. They're a 501c4, which, uh, no, you're fine. It's, it's super confusing. Um, they're technically, in my opinion, they would be a participating organization. And, and it's, you know, I just have to say as, as a private citizen in the county, I, I do wish there was um, more transparency into, you know, we do know who the core leaders of the Talbot Integrity Project are. We don't know who was uh, necessarily funding them. And I think the people of Talbot County have that right. Um, mm -hmm. I, in particular, lifelong resident, uh, you know, grew up in Trap. Um, I have a vested interest. I, I live on, on, on Trap Creek. <laughs> so um, I, I know the issue well. I, I am um, you know, personally opposed to Lakeside, uh, the development. I went on a realm of issues uh, in addition to not necessarily being affordable, not considering um, you know, our school systems and transportation needs. Um, but all that aside, you know, um, uh, I think there were some, some questions that are, that remain outstanding in terms of, uh, the role, the, the Talbot Integrity Project, uh, played, you know, Talbot County led the state in terms of voter turnout, uh, by percentage, uh, and we consistently do, but, but that's something that I'm really proud of. The, the amount of citizen engagement in our, uh, local, uh, elections is phenomenal. Okay. And, and who am I to, to question or condemn anybody uh, who does so, especially when we have Board of Elections rules and regulations that are, or campaign finance rules and regulations that are incredibly difficult to navigate uh, and, and complex to understand. My so. math shows that uh, I mean, TIP has three candidates that uh, are in favor of a reset. So I guess we're going to start a different journey on that front. Um, that's where it gets, that's where it gets to the policy. And that's where I, uh, that's where I clock out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, this has been great. Um, give me a, a few uh, thoughts about uh, 2024. Uh, of course, uh, we will have a congressional race once again. Uh, would you be encouraging somebody like Heather Meserve to run again uh, against Andy Harris? Um, I think, like I said earlier, Heather Meserve is a fantastic candidate. Uh, an incredible individual um, and a steadfast community leader, uh, not just in, uh, you know, uh, in her home county on the Eastern Shore, but across the shore and district in general. And I think, you know, her results, uh, her results uh, this time around uh, demonstrate that there's significant bipartisan support, uh, despite an incredibly difficult uh, district. In terms of candidate recruitment, I, I passed a scarecrow in a field who I think would be a, a better advocate for the Eastern Shore values and interests uh, mm -hmm. than, than our incumbent. Um, he has passed uh, one piece of legislation in his uh, six years in Congress to rename a post office. And I don't think people talk about that enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I'm aware that there's a lot of other additional work that, that you know, uh, members do uh, in addition to, to legislation uh, specifically, but but we need a, a, a strong leader who stands up for shore values, who understands the needs of our farmers, our watermen, our small business owners, the needs of our uh, students and teachers and parents. Um, and I frankly don't believe Andy Harris is that. So in terms of who's stepping up to, to take on Congressman Harris in 2024, uh, I'm fired up and ready to go uh, fight hard for anybody willing to, to step up and, and selflessly uh, make that commitment. In terms of uh, the presidential race, uh, I believe it's up in the air. Um, you know, this this incredible uh, Democratic uh, uh, turnout, uh, you know, during the 2022 midterms. 
uh, has has put a lot of uh, wind in in uh, President Biden's sails uh, for the 2024 race, and he's uh, you know expressed interest in in running again. Um, of course, uh, former President Trump has also uh, you know um, made that decision as well. And and you know as I was, as I said the night he announced, you know we beat him in 2020. We beat his uh, his his. Uh, hand-picked uh, Maryland boy in, in 2022 and will kick his ass again in 2024 if, if it comes to that. But, um, you know, I'm not too worried about what the Republicans are doing. I think we've got a, a stellar group of candidates, uh, whether it's uh, President Biden or any of the other uh, fantastic leaders uh, at the federal level, uh, as well as governors across the across the country. I do not want to share Westmore, so I'm not, I'm not entertaining any talks on uh, Westmore, but um, he'll he'll have a lot of work to do in Maryland. But in terms of the presidential, I'm uh, I'm optimistic. You know, Talbot. You know, we're a purple county, but in in you know 2018, uh, we had a voter registration gap of north of uh, 1,500. Um, and uh, as of October uh, this this year, you know, we've we've closed that gap significantly to to sub 900. Uh, we won for Joe Biden with a voter registration deficit of over 900 registered voters. Uh, and so, you know, we're already trending in the right direction and, and we'll keep going in that direction because, um, you know, again, we've got uh, a lot of momentum, a lot of great energy and, and you know, the people of Talbot County want passionate advocates uh, fighting for common sense, uh, responsible issues that'll That'll just make their lives better. And that's that's what we're all trying to do. And, and Patrick Firth, thanks so much. This was